Hey guys, welcome back to another complete walkthrough video. And this one we'll be looking to tackle the Maths Paper 3H. And this came all the way back in May 2018. Now, this these kind of papers are actually phased out. But they'll be really useful for your current spec. And I'm talking about spec as of 2020. And this is going to apply to 2021. Now, without further ado, let's jump straight in, guys. And oh yeah, for all IGCC and Excel exams, you can always use a calculator. So make sure you guys whip out a nice Casio one because these are the best ones and highly recommended calculators to use in these papers. But other than that, let's move forward. So you could read instructions, but it's always necessary to know what kind of formulas you're given. You're always given Pythagoras and trigonometry. Also some useful 3D shapes. Um, the sine rule and cosine rule as well as area of a triangle. And of course, uh, typical volume of prisms so where you work out the area of his face and times it by its length. But yeah, without further ado, let's look at number one. <clears throat> so here it tells us to work out the value of this entire uh, sum. And we have to write down all the figures on your calculator display. All right, so this is quite easy if you're using your calculator correctly. My advice, if you're using a Casio calculator or anything similar, always start with a fraction button. And it looks a bit like this. Once you do this, you just copy all of the top part and the top half of the fraction and copy the bottom half over here and just press enter so you want to make sure everything's in one place and when you do that you should get a result that says something like this so 231.19 and then dot 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 so yeah always write down pretty much everything you see in your calculator now for part b it says give your answer to part a correct to two sig fix now what this means is that we just care about looking at the first two digits so i'm talking about uh, the two and the three part now, if you look at this one, this means we always do the decide on the digit afters, so in other words, the third digit. So because one is less than five, this means we, we round 231 to 230. So you round down. If it was five or more, it will round the three up to a four, and this would have become 240. In this case, we still could 230. Now, let's go to number two. So it says that the total cost of eight calculators of the same type is £62.80. Work out the cost of 12 of these calculators. All right, so what I would do personally is find the cost of one calculator. So to find one calculator, we're just going to do £62.80 and divide that by eight. And wherever, wherever this gives you, we're going to then multiply it by 12. So do this calculation first, times it by 12, and then you're going to get an answer of... 94 pound 20 and that's it that's simply all you got to do now number three so steve goes on a cycle ride he cycles at a distance of 40 kilometers in two hours and 15 minutes Oof. work out his average speed in kilometers per hour all right give your answer correct to the nearest whole number all right so to work to work out any speed distance time equation we should always know the formula and the formula is always speed equals distance over time. In this case, they want it specifically in kilometers, which we got, and per hour, which we almost got. Now, to convert 2 hours and 15 minutes into just hours, my little trick would, just, would, to, would be to write like this. you got 2 hours, and to change 15 minutes, that's just 15 over 60, because we know there's always 60 minutes an hour. And when you put this in a calculator, you should get... 2.25 so that's 2.25 hours therefore the distance over time well we know um he took 40 minutes uh 40 kilometers so that'll be 40 and he took a time of 2.25 hours and when you put that in you should get average speed of 18 kilometers per hour to the nearest whole number yeah? so make sure you round it up to 18 yeah now next part so here they're saying steve's salary is twenty eight thousand five hundred dollars. all right decent he gets a salary increase of 2.4%. Work out Steve's salary after the increase. Now for these kind of functions, there's a really nice formula to work with. And this is the one I use. I always look at the original value times by some multiply. So one plus or minus array and it'll give us a new value. Okay. In this case, the old value or the original value is 28.5K and the rate is going to be 2.4%. And because it's an increase, we're going to use the plus sign. So in other words, the OV is 28,500 time, times it by 1, the increase, and the rate will be 2.4%. Now, if you're using a Casio, you could just write a percentage button. But if you're not, 
you got to rewrite this bit as 0 0.024, straight, strictly in decimal form. And then when you do this, you should get a result of $29,184, yeah? So always try and keep the answer simple, yeah? Direct. It's better to be direct and quick. Okay, now last one. So Nalini gets a salary increase of 3%. Her salary increase is $702. Work out Nalini's salary before the increase. All right, so what it's saying here is that now 3% is actually equivalent to $702. Why? It's because it actually tells us that that's how much the increase was. Now to find out how much it was originally, well, my personal advice is always always find a 100% because 100% means original amount. Now to get 100%, there's a quick easy way to do it. Find 1%. To get 1%, just divide it by three. So 702 divided by three, you could work it out, you could just leave it like that, that's fine. And then to get the original amount, which is 100%, just times your result by 100. So 702 over 3, whatever that was, times 100. And in your calculator, you should get $23,400. And that's it. Okay, number four. So A, describe fully the single transformation that maps A onto B. Okay, so looking at these two shapes for a second, this looks to me like there's a reflection going on. But where is the, the mirror line? Now, if you're not using um, tracing paper or a mirror, my personal advice is to just pick a corner of A, yeah? So let's say this one here, and pick like its reflective corner on shape B. Well, if this was this corner of A, it must be here. Just by the way it looks, by symmetry. And I would measure the distance. So I'll just put a dot line, and I'll count the blocks. Well, there's four blocks. And usually the mirror is always has an, the mirror always has an equal distance, so it's, it's going to be bang in the middle. This means the mirror line should be here, and yeah, I recommend you have a ruler, guys. So this would be the mirror line. Now, how do we describe this kind of transformation? Well, we would say that shape A is mapped to shape B using a reflection. So that's the first keyword on the x axis, which is at x equals six on x equals six. So that's it. This is this would be pretty much enough. You could say a reflection on the equation x equals six, but yeah, that should cover it. Now B, um, on the grid, rotate shape A 180 degrees about four zero. Okay, so four zero first things first is over here. This is the coordinate. Now what they want us to do is somehow rotate this shape A across into this quadrant here. Again, to use a nice little trick, I'll just measure distances. If you if let's start with this corner, if we're going two down here, this means if we reflect it 180 degrees, we should end up with a straight line. So it should be two two uh, blocks down as well. So this corner is now mapped over here. Likewise for this one here, if I drew a line, a straight line across, so let's just do a dot line. Because it's 180 degrees, it's going to be another straight line. So it'll be somewhere over here. So again, the same distance is measured. Now you can kind of see that. Just by copying the shape, this line here is of course going to map over here. And you can see that this line over here will now map over here. And then you can kind of draw the rest of the shape. So I would now delete this part here and just kind of visually draw it. Because I drew these two lines here, this longer line, which is four lines down, should be over here, four lines down. And then finish the shape, this corner to that corner. And you're done. <clears throat> All right, number five, yeah? So here is a bias five-sided spinner, okay? So it's biased meaning not all, not all um, things are the same, yeah? Now Jack spins the spinner once. The, the table shows information about the probabilities that the spinner lands on red, blue, black, white, or green. Okay, so they kept it algebraically. Now work out the probability that the spinner lands on red. Now first things first, for probability, always make sure you add all of these and they have to sum up to 1, right? So x plus 2x plus 3x and so on, all sums up to 1. So therefore, just adding all these, all these x's up, you got x plus x plus x, that, that's 3x, plus another 3x is 6x, plus 2x is 8x. So 8x must equal 1. And then solving for x, well, x must be 1 over a. Now looking at this question, work at the probability that the spin lands in red. Well, it, to land on red, you need to, it has a probability of x. Because x equals 1 over 8, therefore, the probability of red is therefore 1 over 8. 
Okay, that's that one done. Oh, you get three marks for that. Whoa. Now Malia spins the spinner. Damn, I hate these alliterations. Two hundred times. Work out an estimate for the number of times the spinner lands on black. Okay, so first things first. What's the property landing on black? It's three x. We know the property of x is one over eight, so three x must be three over eight. So we can say, all right, it's going to be property will be three over eight. Because she's doing it two hundred times, just multiply this by two hundred, and then you just put that in your calculator. And when you do that, you should get an answer of seventy-five. That's it. This is literally, in my opinion, easy five marks backed. All right, number six. So a factorize m squared plus seven m. Well, to factorize, you just look at the common term above. Since they both have an m, we can divide both of these out by m. And then when you divide them by m, well, you're just left with a single m for this one. And divide seven m by m, you just left with a seven. And that's it. This is literally your answer. So that goes here. Now B, solve this equation here and show you clear algebraic working. All right, so what I would do, when you've got brackets, always expand it, yeah? So times seven across, you're gonna get seven X plus seven times three is just 21. Copy the rest. And now to solve any equations, always move all the X terms to the same side of the X and the non X terms like 21 with the, with the number terms. So to move five X across, since it's positive here, we need to minus 5x across. So 7x take away 5x is 2x. To move 21 across, we need to minus 21. So minus 4 minus 21 is minus 25. And now this part is easy. You got 2x to get just x divide by 2. So therefore x equals minus 25 over 2, which is minus 12.5. And that's it. Expand and simplify this double bracket. Nice easy trick here guys, just draw some arrows. So all you want to do is y times y, y times minus 4, 9 times y, and 9 times minus 4. When you do that, well, y times y is y squared, y times minus 4 is minus 4y, 9 times y is plus 9y, and 9 times minus 4 is minus 36. And then you just collect the like terms, and just have to look at minus 4y and plus 9y. Combine these two, you get plus 5y. And therefore, we put the answer here, our solution will be y squared plus 5y minus 36. Alright, so I'm really liking these questions so far. They're not too bad. Now, D, simplify this thing here. Alright, so there's a super easy trick to this. If, you, if all of this is powered by something, just stick power 3 to all these terms. So, so in this case, you've got 4 to the power 3. Because you've got power 3 already, it'll be 3 times 3, which is 9 f power 2 because you've got power there'll be 2 times 3 which is 6 and this would be your answer but all, all you gotta do now is put 4 to power 3 in your calculator and that should give you 64 so your final result will be 64 e to the power 9 f to the power of 6 and that's it guys all done I just want to thank you guys for coming to this end of my channel and if you've enjoyed the content so far just go into my channel page hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for more notifications and if you want you can do personalize or all and that way you won't miss any future maths or educational videos anyway guys thank you for watching and see you next time ciao